The iPhone 5S is a refresh of the iPhone 5, but is it enough to keep up with what the competition is going to come out with over the next 12 months? Hey guys, it's Brandon Miniman from Pocket Now, and this is our full review of the iPhone 5S. Let's get to it. Last year we sang the praises of the iPhone 5. Its hardware, speed, camera, and fantastic one-handed usability led us to highly recommend the phone. This year, Apple is keeping a lot the same, while improving upon several key areas where the iPhone 5 has now fallen behind in the face of competition. There are three areas where the 5S is different than the 5, and actually the 5C. One, the A7 64-bit chip. Two, a camera with improved low-light performance and some new shooting modes. And three, a fingerprint security scanner. But in actuality, there are other areas in which the 5S is better than the 5 and 5C, and we'll cover those in the test notes section of this review. Let's start off talking about hardware. You know it's a 5S because the home button has a metallic border that matches the color of the body of the phone. The metal border stands out the most on the gold or silver versions as the space gray has a black ring around the home button that is difficult to see unless you're looking for it. We tested both the space gray and silver version of the 5S. The space gray is a lot nicer than last year's black model because the metal is a lighter color that hides fingerprints better. The silver color is the same as the previous white model. In the new 5S, the home button is actually flat, which is very similar in feel to the curved concave button that we've come to expect from other iPhone models. Flipping over to the back, we can see that the typeface of the word iPhone is a little less bold than last year, perhaps in a nod to iOS 7's new thinner typography. At the top, we can see the new dual tone flash along with the larger camera sensor. The display is the same 1136 by 64 IPS panel used in the iPhone 5 and 5C. It's a really good screen with excellent brightness, color saturation, and contrast, but compared to 1080p screens that take sharpness to a whole new level, the iPhone's display is starting to feel a bit dated. That said, the excellent one-handed usability is obviously still there. The iPhone 5 had some terrible durability problems. After just moderate use, our iPhone 5 had numerous chips and scratches, especially on the metal edges. We're hoping that Apple has solved this issue with the 5S, but only time will tell. Let's talk about some of the features unique to the 5S. Those of you that use a pin on your phone to unlock will love Touch ID, which is the name for Apple's fingerprint scanner in the home button. Setting up Touch ID requires you to use a pin on your phone. Once you do that, you can associate multiple fingers to your phone, whether they're your own fingers or someone else's. The setup process is quick and easy, and in practice, the phone recognizes your fingerprint in about a second, making it almost as fast as just sliding to unlock your phone, which you won't need to do if you're using Touch ID. But there's a big downside to Touch ID. Its use is limited only to unlocking your device and for paying for purchases in the App Store. Even Apple's own apps like Find My Friends and the Apple Store cannot use Touch ID. But overall, we can see Apple using Touch ID in all of its future products. We just hope that its use will be expanded one day with a developer API. The iPhone 5S is powered by a 64-bit multi-core A7 CPU with a gigabyte of RAM. In practice, this makes the 5S faster than the 5, but by about a beat meaning apps open a tad faster, web pages load a bit more quickly, and so on. But as of the time of this video, zero apps have been updated that we can find that have been rewritten in 64-bit. It's only a matter of time before that happens, especially for games, but we're not likely to see Facebook or Instagram upgraded anytime soon because those apps really can't take advantage of 64-bit architecture in their current form. So we don't recommend that you buy a 5S because you think it's going to be much faster than a 5 or 5C because that's just not going to be the case. Along with the A7 CPU, we get the M7 coprocessor, which is designed to measure motion data in a separate low-power chip. This means that fitness apps and apps that use the accelerometer, gyroscope, or compass will be more power efficient. It will also do things like predict when you're inactive, like sleeping, and it will reduce network pinging, helping to improve battery life. And then there's the camera. The f2.2 aperture lens lets in more light, and the two-tone flash helps to avoid bright white photo shots in very low light where the flash fires. The iPhone 5 was falling behind in low-light photography compared to devices like the HTC One and Lumia 1020. Does the 5S's new camera fix the problem? It helps, but it's not a huge leap. The 8 megapixel daytime photos come out about the same as the 5, but when there is limited light, the 5S excels with far less noise present and shots taken without a flash. 
Take a look at these photos taken in dark situations with the 5 and then the 5S. There's a clear difference, especially when no flash is used. However, we're not sold on the true tone flash. In our tests, using the flash on the 5S resulted in slightly warmer photos, but not to the degree of making or breaking a photo. Nighttime video also benefits from the larger lens, as you can see here, with decent visibility and limited noise. The camera software has some neat improvements in the 5S. First is Burst Shot, which isn't new to smartphones, but new to the iPhone. You can hold down the shutter button on the 5S and take dozens and dozens of photos. Then the phone can try to guess which ones are the best, or you can do it for yourself. This is great for situations where there's a lot of motion. Then there is slow motion video, which again isn't new to smartphones, but new to the iPhone. You can capture 120 frame per second video, and then go back and choose which parts of the video you want in slow motion and which you want in regular. And it's a fun tool to use. We're not going to cover iOS 7 because it's been out for a while and most people that are using iOS devices already have it. On the 5S, iOS 7 works great. There's not much more we can say about that. Now for some test notes. In terms of speaker output, we found the 5S's speaker to be significantly louder and clearer than the 5, which is nice. It's still not as loud as boom sound on the HTC One, but it's actually a close second. In terms of battery life, the 5S has a battery that is 10% larger than the 5. Does that lead to better battery life? Yeah, slightly. The iPhone 5 under normal use could easily go about 12 hours without needing a charge under mixed use. The iPhone 5S can go a bit longer under similar situations going for about 13 or 14 hours off the charger. Apple is making a new case for the 5S, after taking a break from making cases for the 5. It's made from a high-grade leather, which we should add passes our smell test, and you pay for it at 40 bucks. Of course, there are many other less expensive cases you can buy for your 5S, and cases for the 5 will indeed fit the 5S. But the Apple made case is especially nice, and it comes in a variety of colors. Now, of course, the iPhone 5S doesn't have a big screen with 1080p resolution, nor does it have the unparalleled flexibility of Android. But if you're buying an iPhone, you have a different agenda. You appreciate a fantastically well-rounded phone that does many things well, all while keeping one-handed usability in mind. We give the iPhone 5S a 9 out of 10. So that's gonna do it for our iPhone 5S coverage. If you wanna see our review of the iPhone 5C, Michael Fisher did a great video and we'll put a link up here so you can jump back to that. We've also got comparisons between the iPhone 5S and the iPhone 5, the 5C and the 5, the 5C and the 5S, we've done it all. And be sure to check out the full review on Pocket Now coming up on the 5S and the 5C is already up, so check that out. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.